So I'm uh, very glad to have everybody here in uh, Landesmuseum. Um, the venue is uh, made for uh, the World Championships. Maybe one or the other has been here for the games. Normally we are here at night. It's the first time I'm here in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a beautiful atmosphere in the morning. And I'm very glad that you came so um, many people here. Um, Hiltel has been founded 1898 by my great grandfather and uh, this was a long time ago and I do it today in fourth generation. Before I start my presentation we will show a, a short movie uh, how we present the brand today and uh, yes it's a vegetarian movie and uh, have a look. that even today in Hollywood when they do movies and they need the sound, they do it with vegetables. So it's a real story. And uh, there was a sound designer uh, from Switzerland and he did this and we redid the movie with uh, new sounds made from vegetables. Um, as I said, uh, Hilton was founded in 1898. We are the first vegetarian restaurant in Europe. This has also been stated by uh, Guinness Book of Records. Our aim is to be the leading vegetarian brand in Europe. Uh, here you see the first generation, Ambrosius and Martha. Ambrosius, he was a tailor from Bavaria and he came to Zurich 1897. He was about 20 years old and uh, he was uh, sick, he had arthritis, he couldn't move his fingers anymore. And uh, a doctor and friend told him he should change his diet. And I suppose, uh, since he was from Bavaria, he liked uh, beer, he was eating uh, a lot of meat. And then uh, he, he went to this restaurant in, in Zurich, this vegetarian place, and he was eating there for three months, vegetarian. And uh, he became cured. So uh, this, uh, for him, was a sign that he should change his diet, and he became a strict vegetarian. He didn't know anything about food uh, and then uh, they asked him if he wanted to take over the place because it wasn't doing well at all. Uh, they were losing a lot of money at the time. You have to imagine vegetarian restaurant 1898. It's not working, it's not like today. And uh, he uh, fell in love with the lady you see on the right, uh, Martha Kneupel. She was from a German vegetarian family and she was the chef. So, uh, from the restaurant. So, uh, they married and then they took over the place. Uh, and uh, she became my great-grandmother. That's the second generation, my grandmother, Margaret, uh, with uh, her husband. She was in India in 1953 as a Swiss delegate of the World Vegetarian Congress in Delhi. And she stayed there for two months. And she loved the people, she loved especially the food. And then she came back with uh, suitcases packed with um, spices from India and recipes. She went to the restaurant and my uncle, he was the chef there, and he said, look, I have a new idea. I will introduce vegetarian uh, Indian cuisine at the Hiltel. And he told her, no, no way. I will never uh, prepare such uh, strange stuff. And she was living in the second floor at Zielstrasse, where the restaurant still is today. And then she started preparing those Indian dishes in her private cuisine and serving it the next day to the customers. So this is how the Indian cuisine was introduced to Hiltel. That's the third generation. My parents, they opened the brand a lot to young people. My father, he did a big change in the restaurant in 1973 because he wanted to renew the brand. He wanted to uh, see if young people would be open for vegetarian food. And he did a big study and he found out that especially young women in the 70s would be open to change their diet. 
So uh, this was also a big step towards a modern brand uh, of Hiltel. Uh, today I'm doing it in fourth generation together with my uh, wife and my father. He passed the business to me in 1998. This was when we, when we celebrated our 100 year anniversary. We have three children. Maybe one day there will be a fifth generation in our restaurant. Here you see the entrance 1898. That's how it was. It was also without alcohol at the time. Uh, in German it was called Vegetarierheim und Abstinenzcafé. <laughs> so I cannot translate this in English. Maybe someone can. This was the official name, really. Yes. Okay. And uh, this is the entrance today. We call it House Hiltel. It has a cooking studio, it has a club, it has a bar, it has catering, uh, takeaway. It's a very wide variety of uh, products uh, we have at the Hiltel. It starts at 6 o'clock in the morning with the coffee bar. We serve juices, coffees. Very important of Hiltel is uh, also design for us. Here you see we do a mixture of design. My wife, she's uh, from Paris. She's, uh, she's coming out of the uh, advertisement. We talk a lot about design and how we do things. A lot of people ask us, uh, well, what is the design of Hiltel? And our design is just what we like. So it's good because no, no one can criticize this, you know. We just say, we like it. If you like it, nice, you know. It, it would be a pleasure if you like it. And we don't have to argue about uh, design standards or stuff like that. So this is the, the coffee bar lounge. You see it's a mixture of old and new, and it's a very cozy atmosphere. We have um, iPods that are mixed by local DJs. For us, uh, music is a very important design component. We do a takeaway uh, for lunch. That's the same place. In the morning you have coffee. Uh, for lunchtime it becomes a takeaway. Then the buffet, we have about 100 dishes on the buffet. Uh, and that's our main item we sell. 60% of our customers go to the buffet. It's served per, per weight. It's very individual. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to. You can just take one spoon for uh, 50 Roppen or you can take load your plate for 30 francs. It's uh, up to you. Then we have a fine dining section, all vegetarian. Here you can, um, we call it business class. You can like appreciate your dinner vegetarian with nice wines and good service. The pastries, we have homemade pastries. And here at the same place turns into the bar lounge. It's about six o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening. People have drinks. And uh, this was at the time when it was still allowed to smoke in the bar. It's not allowed anymore, so it would be without cigarettes today. And uh, we also have a club, we do parties at the same location. This is also very important for us, for the brand. Uh, what we try to do is to renew the brand each generation. And since we exist since 112 years, I think this is very important. Also point of view marketing, it was very good. We, we opened the whole restaurant for a club. We did this with a local radio station. It was their party, it's called Friday Night on tour and they were here and it was about 2,000 people and the radio station wanted to push their party so they were always talking about Hilton. so it was good for us finally it was good for the party and it was also good for the brand awareness we do cooking lessons this is something very important also for the brand you can touch the brand you can feel it you can eat it it's not only on a paper and uh, the cooking lessons also for corporates are picking up very strong and it's something that people like a lot. What we do, for example, is also um, stag nights. Yeah, we do stag nights for ladies in the cooking studio. So they cook together and then they go to the club. That's something that is very appreciated. We have a shop where we sell the items, the herbs and spices. We do caterings, as here. Events, that's uh, the same thing we did here. We did it for Euro 2008. And uh, everything we do, we try to do it neatly, you know, it has to be nice. Also this setting here, uh, it's, it's, also, it's always with a certain standard. It doesn't have to be complicated or very sophisticated, but it has to be 
uh, neatly designed and uh, a nice atmosphere. In year 2000, we created uh, the brand Tibbets together with partners. Uh, we opened the first Tibbets uh, 10 years ago. We will celebrate on the 6th of December. We will celebrate 10 years of Tibbets. Uh, that's my partners to the left, uh, Daniel. Then uh, to the right, Christian and Reto Frey. And uh, we did this together. And we still do this together. And it's a very successful brand. Uh, here you see the outlet in Basel. Uh, point of view design. We work together with Designer Skilled London. We were... Um, Googling about uh, Trisha Gilt, and we found out that she's a vegetarian. So we were contacting her and said, look, we have a good idea. We want to do a vegetarian fast food chain. She found that it's a good idea. So we work together since 10 years with Designer Skill. Every two years, we change design. It's, um, she says, what's the new collection for spring, for example, and then we change the design. She says, what kind of wallpapers? So every two years, the, the restaurant is new and gets a new fresh design. That's the, the food boat. In every Tibbet there's a big food boat with a choice of about uh, 50 dishes. Future is very important for us. Uh, we take care of the kids also. And here you see an example that the kids they can uh, paint on our windows in the restaurant. So we give them uh, color and then can, they can paint the windows. We always tell them don't do this at home. <laughs> We are a very multicultural team. We are very open-minded for the world, for other ideas, for other cultures. We have, uh, at Hiltel, we have 150 people working for us, and they come from 50 different nations. And uh, when we have a new uh, job, we always look that we get a new country. So, for example, we, we have uh, one Swiss person who wants to come, or somebody right now from Iran, and we would not have Iran so Iran would get picked, and not Switzerland. <laughs> and that's fun, you know, it's fun. It's, it's not easy uh, for the management, you know, because it's other cultures, but it's something that we really appreciate. Also, the, the customers are very mixed. Uh, we have a lot of people uh, weed kosher. They come to Hiltel. A rabbi once told my grandmother in the 1960s, uh, if you don't eat kosher, at least go to Hiltel. <laughs> and uh, for the customer, we want to be very refreshing with our customers, natural. The product should be pleasurable, excellent quality, all over. I mean, we always look that the quality is really perfect. It's an old brand. It's a, a brand with a lot of tradition. A lot of people are, came and tried to find out why is Hiltel successful. There were people from HSK, St. Gallen, and all kinds of uh, universities. And what they find out in general is always that uh, we have a lot of contradictions in the brand. So I think it's good to have contradictions. For example, here we show the, the, the games of the World Championships, and we are a vegetarian restaurant. So, you know, people say, well, why do you do this? I mean, normally it's only beer and bratwurst, you know. Why do you do football games? We do this because we like it, and we do this because we know that w women like football too, and they come. And when women come, the men will come automatically. <laughs> price time is very important. So we have a very large variety of pricing. We have sometimes things we give for free, and sometimes things are very, uh, very expensive, you know. So it depends, and, and this has a lot of to do with time for us. And price and time always goes together. Because in general, when you have a lot of time, you are also willing to spend more money. If you have short time, you normally spend less money. As I said, we are a very value-based company. Uh, we take responsibility. Here you see an, I see an image where we do cooking lessons for kids and families. Uh, it's uh, also uh, for, for mothers. Sometimes they tell us, well, you know, our son, he on, only wants to eat sausage and ketchup. What shall I do? And then we show them what they can do. Yeah, so this is the story about Hiltel. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, we are open for questions. Uh, I think Tina will join me on the stage. And thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. All right, I, I have questions, and I'm sure you do too. So I'm just going to kick off. Um, I'm really impressed 
with your brand and all the stuff you do. And also being kind of active in the social media realm, I was actually really surprised to see how active you guys are as a restaurant on Facebook and Twitter. And, um, and can you talk a little bit on how you think that's important for you as a restaurant? Maybe we can show the Twitter wall, please. Uh, this is very important because I said from the beginning on we want to be a leading brand in Switzerland for social media in the restaurant business. So we are using this and it's, it's more a trial and error uh, principle, you know. Actually, we don't really know what we are doing, but we are just doing it and it's fun, you know. And, and here you can see that uh, we have this Twitter wall in the restaurant. So people sit there, they have their coffee and they write something to it, their girlfriend and they see it up there. It's fun. And the brand, the brand spreads. I don't know how you knew about us, pr probably also by Twitter, that you heard it somewhere. And uh, this is uh, something uh, positive. What we did here, uh, especially for the football games, you see it on the right side, we, did, uh, 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 we introduced also SMS in this. And each time you send an SMS here, you do a charity of two francs for this gem and you, you give food to children in Africa. So, uh, as you see here, there's a counter. Uh, we are right now at around 7,000 SMS. So this is around 15,000 francs that went uh, to the charity through SMS. So I think it's a great thing. So, so here we are combining uh, something good for the world uh, with fun. And uh, this is something great. And what is also very important for me, uh, we are very transparent for feedback. You know, I really want to know what we, how we do it. I don't, it's nice when people give you compliments. But I think it's very important to be open-minded for critics also. And, and this is also a, a tool, you know. And sometimes we get critics here, you know. I mean, strong ones. But that's okay. Because it's, it's okay that people talk about us. But we want to know what people talk about us. And like this, we know. We have this in the restaurant. All the time we see what's talked about us. And, and one example, the other day there was a, a Twitter that said, well, the coffee at Hiltel is is not very expensive, but it's not the best, you know. So uh, I, I called right away the guy from the coffee machine and said, hey, that's not okay. I mean, we want to have a, 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 a coffee that is not expensive, but it should be the best in town. So come and, and let's check it. And, and about 50 minutes later, the coffee was okay again. <laughs> have you heard of this restaurant in Australia that, that is using this new thing called menu pad, where they're using iPads to, for the, they hand it, when you sit down at a restaurant, you get an iPad, and you browse the menu, you can look at pictures, and you actually order on the iPad. Is it something like this, like, seeing how you embrace technology, is that something you would like, think about as well, maybe in the business class? Well, um, I mean, I think it's a great idea. Why not? Um, in the business class, I don't know. That we, at the Hilton, we did it like this, that the, the, the fast, casual things, quick... Uh, Things are more going through the counter, you know, to take away the buffet. And then the business class is uh, rather more sophisticated. But um, I would say, why not? I would have to look at this uh, more closely. Uh, what we do, um, we take our orders by mobile um, devices for service. And we do this since 20 years. And, and I mean, when we started this, some people hated us. I remember there was one guy 20 years ago coming in, and then we took the order with the mobile uh, pad, you know, and then the, the guy, he came to me and I said, hey, this is not McDonald's, I never come again to your restaurant. So that's 20 years ago. I mean, today it's normal, it's not a big thing. And why not give it to the customers? Um, in Switzerland, it could be difficult, you know, because people, as you said before, uh, when we talk, you thought we are more in New York and not in Zurich or Switzerland. And sometimes uh, Swiss people are very traditional about things. So it would be... But I, I, would, I would do a test in, in a certain section and try it out and see what people say. I bet there will be a line out the door for the people that want to try it on the iPad, I swear. <laughs> All right. Who has a question down here? Oh, I'm just curious to see if you've thought about expanding the brand to other countries and taking this, being from the States, I don't think we have anything like this, especially like the fast food idea being yep. really important there. Okay. Uh, Tibbetts, uh, maybe I didn't say it before, we have uh, one Tibbetts outlet in London, uh, uh, off Regent Street, near Piccadilly Circus, and we do this for one and a half years now, 
and it has not been as successful as we thought from the beginning on. Uh, there's several reasons, won't be too long to explain all of it, uh, but uh, it's picking up and uh, the idea of going to London is uh, to go to the United States. So actually our, our vision was to go to London, see how it works there and then go over to the US. And my wife and I, we were in LA about six months ago and uh, we, we think, we, we believe that in LA it would be a perfect spot to start. Uh, we think rather to start e West Coast than East Coast. A lot of people tell us to go first to the East Coast, but I think with our product it's better to start in uh, rather LA or San Francisco. So that's our vision. Our vision of Tibbets is to be the, the, the worldwide brand for vegetarian fast food. So that's the vision and I hope one day it, it will be there. Yeah, thank you. You also have one of the most beautiful matchboxes that you can take in. Japanese papers on there, yeah. Yeah. but now they're very plain and vanilla. Okay. Well, can you talk about your matchboxes? <laughs> <laughs> we had those very special matchboxes. They were from you? No. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> they were very special. Look, I, I, I got this message uh, and it's true. It's true. They were nicer. And they were also more expensive. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a point. It's a point. We should use those ones again. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Merlin, and I'm a huge fan of barbecues. Ah, really? Okay. <laughs> Big problem for us. <laughs> but um, you can also cook vegetarian stuff on the grill. Yes, you can. And I but was, yeah, mm -hmm. I was just wondering, um, do you guys do any of that stuff? Or, like, for instance, here's a perfect venue for having a grill and. Mm -hmm. making some quesadillas or something. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm a chef myself. I was doing my apprenticeship at the Dolder Grand on Zurich. And I um, come from a very classical French kitchen. So really basic meat and, and, and fish, you know. And uh, I know today that it's uh, possible to make every, almost everything in a vegetarian version. You have at the Hilton, we have a Gordon Bleu. We have uh, Zurich Schnatzitz mit Rösti, it's very good. You can hardly tell uh, there's no meat. We have uh, Kalkatz mit Hörnli, which is very good. But the barbecue, that's really a big, big uh, thing, yeah? Because there's a process going on when you put meat on a grill. It's, uh, it's a French word, it's called Maillard Reaktion. Uh, Maillard, M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D. And this is the thing that happens when the, the meat and the, the, the fat is going on, 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 the, on, the, on the wood, you know, the smoke goes up. Huh? And this is very difficult to, to make without meat, you know. And we are working on it, we are working on it. <laughs> but it's possible. I mean, we do, we do we, in, in the book, the green, there's cookbooks, by the way. The green book has about three or four grilled recipes, uh, for example, mushrooms. And what is very important for a good barbecue is the marinade. Huh? You have to marinate with a good barbecue sauce. And you can do this with vegetables, with mushrooms, with uh, saitan, with tofu. There's a, there's a big choice uh, to do. By the way, uh, when Germany played uh, Wednesday, right? Wednesday? We, uh, we had the best uh, currywurst from Zurich. Yeah, come. And he was here at the corner. Uh, but I told him he can come, but he has to use vegetarian sausages. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did. And he was kind of shocked at the beginning, and the Germans coming, they were really shocked, because... <laughs> but it was okay, because it was the, the, it's the currywurst, I mean the taste is not really the wurst, it's, it's the sauce and the curry. And if you're trying to export the brand, I mean, who, how do you do that? I mean, you have to be very much aware of specialities in each country you go and in the culture you try to go into so who is your consultant are you are you advised by people here or local people and or are you going there yourself doing the scouting and do it by your own feelings when you go internationally it gets much more complicated definitely and uh, that's one thing we realized in London and uh, we said we go there we do it by ourselves by the way and we just do it one-to-one -one. and then we see what happens. 
So now we have one and a half years of experience and we saw what happens. And <laughs> we uh, did some uh, adapt, we, we adapted, you know, some products uh, just British people don't want, they want it a different way. But I think it's very important to be bold about it and to, to put the brand like it is and not to compromise too much, you know. So uh, we say it's the brand, Tibbets, it's the tradition from Hilton, it's all those new things we brought in and uh, we really stick into it. And uh, what I also think is very important is uh, not to give up too quickly. Uh, there's a, a word saying success seems to be a matter of hanging on after others have let go. And this is very important for us, you know, I mean, and uh, we could have given up in London after one year, say, well, it's not, it's not worth it, but we, we stick into it. And um, point of view, brand awareness, uh, we, we do a lot um, out of our guts. I mean, Los Angeles, we were there for one week, my wife and I, walking through, talking to people, and I think we know about 70% how it should be, 70%. And what is very important to have local partners, and that's certainly a mistake we did in London. Actually, we said we need a local partner. We didn't find one that was uh, adjacent for us, so we did by ourselves, and that was wrong. And you need a local partner. You need to share the success. And uh, we wanna we wanna go on in, uh, into other countries. What we wanna do? We wanna have a partner in the country. We will we will give them shares in the country up to 50%, you know, and then share the success, but also share the problems. And I think that <laughs> then it becomes easier also for us. You mentioned a lot about feedback and getting feedback from customers and stuff. And also mentioned like having a good feeling and say like, if we think this is good, let's go with that. How do you go by deciding like when it's good feedback, like, you know, the coffee is bad, or when it's really bad feedback, like, oh, I don't want to go here because you do mobile ordering or whatever. How do you decide, like, this is my gut feeling, I should go for it, and this guy is an idiot, or, okay, no. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's very easy to answer this. The guy is never an idiot, because he's a customer. So, if, if there's a feedback that is maybe strange, I mean, uh, there's some staff from Hilton here, and they know me about this, and I'm pretty special about this, because I say, every complaint has a little grain of truth. Every. Okay, so, so if there's a bad feedback about something, it doesn't mean that we have to change the whole concept, you know. There's uh, often people coming and complaining because there's no meat at Hillful. <laughs> yeah? So it wouldn't be a reason to put meat, you know. what? You, you have to know your vision and stay focused and straight about it. But within the vision, there's a lot of, lot of space to move around, you know. So there's no... no uh, comp fundamental complaints, you know, uh, that, that we say that's wrong, if you would change this, we would not do it. But this, this happens, uh, not, I mean, even the feedback, there's, there should be me that helpful. I take it seriously. So we, we do Cordon Bleu now, we have Zurich Schnatzels. It's like me, it's not me, but it's like me. So this customer could come and say, yeah, okay, they did something with my feedback. So uh, this is, um, in general, we can learn, you know, and, and it's not, we, we don't know exactly how we should do things. It's, it's, it's people, tell, they tell us, that you just have to listen. And people will tell you exactly what you have to do. And then you have to sort out what is, what you use. I mean, sometimes there's things you don't use, you just throw it in the garbage and then it's, it's okay again. <laughs>